What's up guys, today I'll be taking a look at an ammo counter sent to me by Nathaniel. Product link will be in the description down below, and in this video I'll be showing you how it functions, how to install it, and then testing it with half length darts at a high rate of fire out of my FDL3. Let's begin. Ammo counter is a two part accessory for any nerf blaster. The front half houses an IR beam, which is tripped whenever you fire a dart through it. And the rear half has a digital display, which tells you how much ammo you have remaining. Ammo counter's display comes with preset ammo capacities, which you can toggle through with the up and down arrow buttons. If the ammo capacity for your magazines isn't listed here, for instance, say you've encountered jamming in Worker 22s, a common solution for that is loading 21 darts instead of 22. Well, you can come to any of these preset values, long press the right hand button, and now you can edit the value and save it. By the way, that flickering on the ammo counter display is not actually there in real life. It's due to my camera's shutter speed being out of sync with the refresh rate of the display. Moving on. Taking a look inside the muzzle that houses the IR beam, the inside has a 3D printed black shroud. This is to help reduce stray light entering from the front and bouncing around in there and interfering with the sensor, leading to false or missed readings. The muzzle attaches to any Nerf, Worker or Jet faux barrel material. Here I'm using leftover clear barrel material from my Alpha RT kit, but later in the video I'll explain why that was a bad idea. Ideally, you'll want to use black Worker barrel. For those using an FDL3, you'll have to replace your muzzle piece with this one, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. This one's tighter and fits the faux barrel material more snug than the normal FDL3 muzzle would. I was considering simply electrical taping around the faux barrel to make it tighter in the normal muzzle, but I thought it best to show you guys the proper method and actually change the muzzle out. Ammo counter's IR beam muzzle half connects to the display half using micro USB. Ammo counter is also completely rechargeable from the micro USB port. The power for the IR sensor is provided by the display half. There's an advanced settings menu which can be accessed by long pressing the left button. This menu will become important later in the video, but I'll explain why later. From the instruction pamphlet provided with the ammo counter, the advanced settings allow you to change the auto reset time, that is how long it will wait after your ammo reaches zero before it resets your ammo back to full again. Personally, I'd time how long it takes you to change mags and set it slightly faster than that. You can also adjust the screen brightness, can calibrate the IR beam, can adjust where the low ammo blinking warning kicks in, and you can choose the fire detector type for whether you have an IR beam or a trigger pull sensor. There's not much more to explain about how it works, so now let's install it onto my FDL3. First, I'll change out the FDL3's muzzle to the provided one. Now that the muzzle's installed, let's discuss mounting the ammo counter. If you don't want to use an optic on your blaster, you can just mount it straight on your top rail. However, I like to know where my darts are going to go. So Nathaniel sent me a 90 degree Picatinny adapter so the ammo counter will sit off to the side. Installation of the adapter is just a matter of two bolts to fasten, it's really easy. Because I'll be mounting the ammo counter at a 90 degree angle, I'm going to have to rotate the display so it remains upright. All you need to do is remove two screws, remove the top casing, and now the display will pull up. Just rotate it and push it back down, and reinstall the casing. Now all that's left to do is attach the ammo counter to the Picatinny adapter, and push the muzzle half into the FGL3's muzzle, connected by the faux barrel. It 
it's all ready to use, so let's do a firing test. Let's start out with something simple. Single shot mode. Hmm, it doesn't seem to be working outside. It was working fine inside the house. Given that information, feel free to pause the video and comment down below what you think could be causing the issue. I'll give you three seconds. It's the clear faux barrel. It's letting too much light enter right next to the IR beam and it's causing interference. So now I'll simply wrap some black electrical tape over the clear faux barrel and the problem is solved. If I had some black worker barrel, I wouldn't have had this issue in the first place. Okay, so now let's try some harder stress tests. Swapping to full auto mode, Let's start at 20% rate of fire. It's about 20, 20%. All right, let's see if we can keep up with this. Should be five left. That certainly is five left. It's working fine. Now let's try 50% rate of fire. We'll just go 50%. also working fine. However, when I go above 50% to 80% rate of fire, the ammo counter misses one of the darts in my magazine of 15. Similarly, when I step up to maximum rate of fire, the issue is still there. But it hasn't gotten worse, it's still missing exactly one dart. Personally, I don't go above 50% rate of fire with my FDL3, so this problem isn't a huge concern to me. But I know some of you like to mag dump on people. I also don't know if this is a specific issue to half length darts, since ammo counter was designed for full lengths. I'll send Nathaniel an inbox and see what we can do. Due to differences in time zone, it took a little while for a reply, but for your high rate of fire mag dumpers out there, there is a solution. In the advanced settings menu, that is long pressing the left button, there's an option to change the calibration of the IR beam. By default it's set to 3, and for most people 3 is fine. We're going to swap it to 2. Let's see how that goes at 100% rate of fire. We should have nine darts remaining. And that's nine darts in the mag. Let's fire again. Should be four remaining. Yep, we have four. Should be one remaining. Sweet, we have one. Looks like changing the setting for C from three down to two has worked a charm. Why not set it to 1 though and have maximum sensitivity? Well, according to Nathaniel, that'll get you false positives from too much sunlight. So keeping it at 3 if that works for you is best, or 2 if you absolutely need it. Finally, the one downside I have to mention is what happens when you decapitate darts. Unfortunately, if the decapitation happens before the IR beam, it's going to register 2 darts instead of 1. At worst, you'll change mags a couple of darts earlier than you actually need to. But recent batches of worker darts, particularly the Gen 1s I've been buying from Monkey Mods, have had a lot better glue, and decaps don't happen with them nearly as much as the old darts I just fired here. In summary, I think the ammo counter will be a great addition to any blaster. If you're a competitive nerfer, it's always important to know how many darts you have remaining. And being able to know that at a glance is such a quality of life improvement, especially for flywheel blasters where counting your shots can be challenging, if not impossible. My only suggestion for Nathaniel on how to improve the user experience would be to include some black barrel material, possibly pre-cut to the correct length. 
But that being a worker product, you could easily order that yourself separately. Thank you Nathaniel and Ammo Counter for sending me this product to review. And if you guys are interested in picking one up yourselves, I'll leave Ammo Counter's store link in the video description. As always, thank you guys for watching. See yas.